This is rocking with Jam Man is with Edge of Paradise. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. Welcome. Well, for the, now those who are, who are watching and not familiar with the band, could you tell us about it? Could you tell us about the band? So we are a cinematic rock band. We've been around for 10 years now. Um, we have our fourth albums coming out this September. We toured US, Europe, Japan. We filmed the music video in Iceland. <laughs> and um, yeah, we do crazy things like that. And um, we love to play shows and meet people and, you know, put out music. So that's us in a nutshell. Wow. It's a pretty good nutshell, eh? <laughs> Congratulations on your new album, The Unknown. Congratulations on that. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So this comes out Friday. You have to be pretty excited, aren't you? I am very excited. Yeah, it's, um, you know, we made this album over the year of 2020. We were supposed to tour the whole entire year, but instead we made the album. And it's kind of, um, yeah, it, ha it means a lot to us. And um, it's definitely our best music. And we're just excited to get it out there in the, into the world. So we're almost there. Are you planning on having a party or anything or doing something like special today? Um, you know, party sounds nice. We're kind of in, we're in Los Angeles, so it's still kind of hard to plan, plan parties here just because of some restrictions. We're supposed to have some shows. We're going to on the same we have a cool lyric video for one of the songs, Tidal Wave. So we're going to be releasing that and, you know, just um, enjoying and celebrating and just being grateful that this album is finally out there <laughs> in the world. How would, you, how would you describe your sound? How would you describe your sound? It's, I would describe it as cinematic rock with industrial and symphonic elements. I think it's like 80s rock, like Lya Ford, but like mixing a little harder metal, mixing a little harder metal. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So listening to this album, it sees it's all ties to, to be about technology. Yeah, well, it has, um, it has a lot of futuristic elements and themes and sounds. And um, I've, my dad is a scientist. I've always been fascinated with science and just like how technology is evolving and we're almost living on the brink of science fiction. Um, so yeah, a lot of songs explore really fun themes. It's almost like like movies like Interstellar or Star Wars. Um, you would enjoy our music. <laughs> What made you become a rock star instead of following your father's footsteps and becoming a scientist? Um, well, you know, I think it's my mom's fault because she she took me to piano and uh, just theater and music lessons when I was like four. And I was always in it. I was in the arts. But I also, you know, I also did well in school. I even in college took astronomy and um, you know, I was always interested in science, but I don't know, life just takes you, like you said, you know, <laughs> taking life day by day, that's what happened to me, just going where life leads me. If this rock thing doesn't work out that well, are you going to become a scientist? You going to become a scientist? <laughs> I don't know if it's a good way to look at it, because I think once you really commit to something, there's no way it doesn't work, because all you have to do is follow through, and just like being a scientist, you know, it's, you still have to start somewhere, you have to keep building. So the only way um, for it to not to work out is if you give up. So yeah, you just keep going, keep building until you know, you're happy where you're at and you know, you keep evolving, so. How did you come up with the uh, concept? How did you come up with the concept? Of the band or the album? Album. I think, uh, well, if, if some people are familiar with our previous album, Universe, I think that really uh, defined the band, the sound of the band, kind of the um, essence of the band. And this album 
we just took it to a whole new level, but it's a continuation of universe. And uh, we just um, started to dive you know, deeper into all these interesting topics of conversation. And also, you know, like living through a pandemic is an unprecedented time. I think that's kind of where the unknown, um, the song kind of came out because I remember I was driving in Los Angeles in Los Angeles, the traffic is always insane. And that one day I was driving and everything was empty and everything was like, um, yeah, everything was empty, deserted. So it was really <laughs> apocalyptic, like, you know, feel in the air. And that's when I got home and I think I wrote that song that day because, you know, we never really know what's going to happen, whether it's today, whether it's like, you know, after this reality or whatever, however you want to look at it. But instead of, you know, being afraid, um, of what we don't know, I wanted to put a spin on it and kind of uh, find empowerment because maybe what we don't know is something really cool. But yeah, I think that's how, and then like Digital Paradise, the song, um, I was always interested in like the evolution of artificial intelligence and how humans will play into that. So, you know, just exploring those fun topics and the music kind of leads the way so you follow it. Your video for The Unknown was pretty awesome. What was it like filming in the desert? Oh, thank you. Yeah, the the video was really fun to film. It was filmed by Scott Hansen. And we drove out there in the middle of nowhere. It was, it was not as hot as we thought it would be because we kind of filmed it in the spring, in the early spring. And uh, yeah. We just drove around to find cool spots and we had to wake up at like five in the morning because we had to catch the sunrise and the sunset because that's where the best lighting is. So we had to get up super early, uh, you know, do the makeup, the uh, outfits, drive out to the location and we saw the sun come up. So that's when we filmed it then. Um, and then we had a bit of a break and then we went to the desert and we caught the sunset there. So yeah, it was fun. Yeah, that got to sound pretty fun. Go waking up at five o'clock and putting all the <laughs> stuff on and then going into the middle of nowhere. That sounds pretty fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you do a lot of writing during the lockdown? Yeah, we wrote the whole album during the lockdown. I think that was the only time we wrote the album where we just focused on writing because before we were kind of writing music but also touring in between filming this time there was nothing we could do other than write the album so yeah the whole year it took us to make it yeah well it kind of was good right though well, you know because yeah, it was like it was kind of like it was the best it was kind of for like artists like you and stuff like that it was like pretty good for people yeah. because they have a little time to write an album or even set up our, their own label so we can get them like on their feet. That's true. Yeah. How did how did the lockdown affect you personally? How does the lockdown affect you personally? Well, I mean, there was. Um, I live in Los Angeles and my family lives in Houston, Texas. So of course it sucks because I wasn't able to see them very often. And then my sister was in Russia, so she was like on the other side of the world. So, you know, that's always hard. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, are you Russian? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was going to ask you just at the voice and everything. So I was just going to, man, is she Russian or not? I don't know. <laughs> kind of mixed. I'm a bit Armenian and a bit Russian. But yeah. Armenian? Mm -hmm. I have a mix in me. Yes. I'm Turkish. Really? Wow. That's yeah, cool. yeah. It's a really uh, awkward position there. It's a little... No, no, they're not awkward. These days, if we get along, you know, people are great for who they are. All right. I just don't don't tell any young Armenians to search up in history about Turkish and them. Oh god. <laughs> what else did you guys do to say stay sane during the lockdown? What did you guys else do? I think. I think. Well. Probably staying creative kept us sane because for us, if we're not doing anything, 
we get crazy. But uh, yeah, I was just kind of focusing on the music. Um, tried to, you know, work out a little bit. I don't know, everything was closed. So we, were, we tried to go outside more, you know, out in nature. Um, just, yeah, do that. <laughs> Uh, do you think we might get another one this year, lockdown? Because, you know, all the new strains and stuff like that, do you think? I really hope we don't, because we really want to go to war. And we <laughs> want people to get back to their normal lives. And we want the world to, you know, for people to stop, you know, um, having a difficult time. So I hope there isn't going to be one. But, I mean, you, I don't know. I don't know. It's hard to say right now. Seems like things were going, you know, in the positive direction, and now we get these variants. But hopefully, we'll make it through <laughs> very soon. Do you find it hard to stand out being a female in a fronted band, female fronted band? Do you find it hard to stand out? Um, I don't know. You know, I never really thought about that. Even you know, when we started, because I come from classical music, I was never really in rock or metal scene. So when people ask me questions like that it always confused me because I just feed myself you know I'm just doing music and guys and girls do music so like and then it started to click like yeah in rock music there's not that many but I never really experienced that we always try to put music forth before if I'm a girl or not you know we always try to just make the best music we can and let that speak for itself and just keep keep doing what we're doing basically yeah. Does it sometimes feel like you're in a boys club being in the metal industry? <laughs> um, maybe, but I don't mind that because sometimes boys need to be told what to do by girls now. <laughs> 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 but you no, know, it's you know I've been lucky because everybody in my circle or in the band or everybody around me, oh, has been so um you know respectful and supportive and we just you know we just do our thing and i think these days um there's so many you know girls and boys do things um so it's yeah it's 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 normal so i feel fine i feel great <laughs> now i have to say you are very pretty with that being said does that give you any disadvantages Oh, thank you. You're you know, may maybe sometimes because when people first see us and they don't listen to the music and they're like, oh, you know, you just got a pretty singer and maybe she can't even sing or write. Like they assume I don't write the music. They just assume, you know, I'm just there to like look pretty. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I write the music with Dave. I, uh, you know, plan everything, the music videos. Like I'm the force behind this so it's 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 my band it's they you know it's our band so um um that's why we always want to try to let people hear the music first before they judge us <laughs> but like with anything don't judge the book by its cover right yeah never judge a book by its cover one of the biggest <laughs> lessons in the world one of the biggest lessons yeah. in the world what i mean is when you when you are so pretty like you you can't just jump on stage with messy hair and dirty clothes. You have to take some time to look good before getting out of hair. You can't like go and shower. You gotta, gotta like because people are gonna be like, "Why is she looking like that, bro?" Why is <laughs> yeah, maybe. Well, first of all, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, you know, sometimes it was hard when we were touring, and then you just sleep on the tour bus, and then you have to jump on the show, and then like sometimes the when we were in Europe like when you shower after the show they didn't have hot water because it's like a venue and sometimes the hot water runs out so <laughs> it sometimes it's not very easy but you you learn tricks like I'm so good at doing makeup in like two minutes like in my car and like have these tricks that I can just put on clothes and my hair is pretty easy I don't do much to my hair I just brush it really quick and that's why like having long hair is actually easier than short hair because short hair you have to style it long hair I just let it go 
<laughs> Dude, what I basically do, my hair is a little bit long. I'm trying to make it grow longer. So what I do, I just like mainly get this brush. To get, I just want to get all the knots out and that's it. I, I, I can like put some style on the lid, but I just, this is what happens when I just brush it. Yeah, well, your hair looks good. I like your stuff. Awesome. Are you playing any shows this year? I think so. I think we're going to do some local shows, but we're going to start touring in the new year. So, yeah, I don't, we don't have anything set in stone right now. We're just focusing on releasing the album, more videos. And once we, um, you know, once the, uh, however the world is looking like, we'll lock something down. It's because like we, we had to cancel like two, two of our last tours. So we decided we're just going to wait and see how things are before announcing anything. Stay safe with playing shows with mm -hmm. all this COVID. How do you stay safe? How do you stay safe? Well, we haven't really played shows during that. We haven't played a show in quite a while. But I think, you know what? When we went to Europe, I think we just didn't know it yet, but it already started. Because when we came back, we came back at the end of 2019. And they locked everything down like two months later. But we were hearing about it in China already. Um, so actually everybody on the tour bus got sick, but I was wearing my mask because, <laughs> you know, I just, because if I get sick, I lose my voice. I can't do the show. So I was always like, paranoid. Like actually so, pandemic, the pandemic sick, sick, or just like sick? No, like, you know, because see, when you travel, you're, you know, sometimes you catch a cold or something. So that's why I was just being careful so I don't get a cold. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, I was like, what? How are you guys even writing? Did yeah. <laughs> how did she, didn't you guys get a little COVID then? How are you guys even talking? What are you guys doing right now? Yeah. So, yeah. So I think that's how, um, yeah, I just took vitamins, uh, wore mask, tried to get a lot of sleep as much as they could, although it wasn't very easy. But yeah, you know, the usual thing. Water, drink water, eat food. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do for fun besides making music? What do you what do you do for fun? Well, you know, making music is a lot of fun. Touring is fun. When we go on tour, it's like, you know, for us, it's like going on the vacation. Although it's a lot of work, but we really love it. Um, I also like to paint. Like, for example, I painted this one. It's actually for the title track. So it's fun for me to paint. Very beautiful painting. Very pretty. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, that almost dropped. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay it's bulletproof but <laughs> um I like to I really like to go around the city I like walking around and looking at things so that's fun um what is your favorite memory from playing a show what is your favorite memory um there is a lot of so many good memories I think uh, well when we were in Japan a really cool memory uh, was they took us to a Buddhist temple and they oh. blessed so that oh. was really cool yeah and they had like a private tea ceremony for us so it was just so memorable because the culture is just so different so it was so new to us you know so it just really sticks with you because it's something you've never experienced before and uh, yeah but I mean everywhere you go just meeting people and how kind they are and how when you see that your music means something to people it's like the most it's the coolest thing so uh do you believe in buddhism what religion are you um you know i don't think i follow a specific religion i just i believe in everything in a way wait you believe like there's every single thing religion is all like no well, I think i really like reading about religions and religions come from history and and I think it's really interesting. I just believe that, um, I believe there's more to life than we think or more to reality as we know it. Even like if you look at it from like science perspective, think if you give like an iPhone to someone 500 years ago, they would have never believed it existed. So they would, I- They would have probably called you a God because of the technology. <laughs> or unless in the 1600s, you would have got hanged. Yeah, you're right. The trials. 
you know your history. Yes. So yeah, I just think that there's so much we don't know. So um, I think it's important that we have an open mind because an open mind is the doorway to the future. So yeah. What is your worst memory? Oh, wait, sorry. Okay. Wait, did I ask the question, what is your favorite memory from Planner Show? Did I ask? Yeah. Oh, sorry. What is your worst okay. memory from Planner Show? What's your worst? <laughs> Um, not necessarily awards, but it was definitely one that sticks with me. We had one show in Seattle and we actually never made it there because we had a van and it broke down. So we never made it there and it was, we were upset because we never missed the show before. Oh, <laughs> and that then we suck. Yeah, that sucks. That sucked pretty good. But did, it's that, okay. did anybody throw a fit like, no, <laughs> um well we were probably all about to because it was frustrating but I think when you we had to we're in a situation where we had to figure it out on our own so it's like your brain goes in from like panic mode into we gotta fix this mode you know Dude, we gotta do something about this we can't worry about this we gotta do it come on guys we should we go out we gotta fix it. <laughs> exactly exactly if you can make your dream tour, who would be on the bill with you? Hmm, so many cool bands out there. I think lately, maybe um, like Ramstein with Intemptation would be cool. I mean, Nine Inch Nails. Do you know those bands? Yeah, of course. Yeah, they're a pretty well, cool band. I would have yeah. liked. Yeah, I would like to see a tour. Then, so mm -hmm. yeah, I would definitely go there. Definitely go there. The just mm -hmm. take a cheap though, twenty dollar. Okay, twenty dollar. That's it. Twenty dollar. <laughs> of course, you get VIP passes. Oh really? Let's go. <laughs> That's what me and my uh, parents and my grandparents are talking about. You better get you better get us backstage passes, or someone's gonna die, and it ain't gonna be me. But it's gonna. <laughs> be I I'm just. Yes. I, I'm just <laughs> It would actually be my first, no, not my first time backstage, but like my first time as my own thing because my dad does this business as well. So this would be like my own, like my talk. I get to talk to them. Oh, it's my talk. Cool. It's my what talk. does your dad do? Uh, he does the same thing. He's interviews and he takes pictures. These pictures right here, you can all see. He took all these. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Yeah. What's next for you? What's next for you? Well, what's next for us is, you know, releasing this album, touring, touring. Um, we're going to make another music video that's going to be like a short film where it's going to be a storyline, a dialogue. It's going to be like a mini movie. Uh -huh. so, yeah, I would, uh, I would be down for like a short film kind of video. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. How do my followers follow you? How do my followers follow you? Well, they can find us anywhere they want. They can find us on Spotify. Just search Edge of Paradise on YouTube. Search Edge of Paradise. Also, Facebook, Instagram. We have our TikTok now. <laughs> oh, yeah, TikTok. <laughs> well, for the new bands. I keep hearing that for the new bands. I never have actually heard it from one of the old bands. Like, I never heard someone ever say, like, yo, we got TikTok, yo. Okay. <sighs> Dude, run again. Yeah. We just put out music videos for on there, just clips of music videos. But yeah, because people were tagging us, tagging our songs. So we just got on there and, you know, it's TikTok. What can you do? But yeah, that's how they can find us. And our website is edgeofparadiseband.com. Well, thank you for being on the show. Uh, the next time we talk is at the backstage and one shows. Peace. It had a, I had a very good conversation. Great interview. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure to meet you. You rock. Yeah, pleasure <laughs> to meet you too. Have a great Bye. day. Bye. You too.